Hello everyone, this is Teacher V and let us continue answering your activities from Learner's Packet or yung LEAP. Meron na akong nagawang video para sa learning task number 2, right? This time, mag-uusapan naman natin kung paano natin masasagutan yung assimilation part. Again, ang topic pa rin natin is about proportion and application of fundamental theorems of proportionality. So, quarter 3, week 5. So, ready na ba? Okay, so again and again, disclaimer lang, yung mga binigay ko rito na, na example ay medyo iniba ko ng given. Pero yung process ng pagsusolve is ganun pa rin. So, pwedeng-pwede nyo itong dagdagan at i-improve pa yung ibang mga answers. Okay, so let's say for the first question, how would you describe proportion? So, yung proportion, since nakita naman na ninyo sa mga samples kung ano yung proportion at nagawa nyo na, we can say that a proportion is a statement of equality of two ratios. Okay? It can be an expression of two equal fractions, such as A over B is equal to C over D, or in colon form, A is to B as C is to D. So, pwede nyo ilagay lang dito yung meaning ng proportion. Paano ba natin sinusulat ang proportion? And yung parts nito, which are the means and extremes. So, the second and third terms are called the means, and the first and fourth terms are called the extremes of the proportion. In any proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So, masasabi natin na proportion ng dalawang ratio o yung dalawang fraction natin if yung product ng means and extremes ay equal. So, yan. Pwede nyo pa to i-improve. Okay? Kung gusto nyo, pwede nyo pang dagdagan. Ito ay yung pinaka-summary na lang. Pag sinabi, proportion. Then, number two, cite an example where you can apply proportion in your everyday life. Describe how can you apply the proportion in that situation. So, napakarami ng application ng proportion sa buhay natin. Baka minsan di nyo lang namamalayan, proportion na pala yun. So, naaalala nyo na second quarter, meron tayong lesson about direct variations. Ang direct variations ay proportion din. So, may idea na kayo dito. Ngayon, magbigay na lang ako ng isang sample. And usually, ang proportion nga, magagamit natin sa pagluluto, sa business, okay, sa distance. So, napakarami. Um, ito na lang yung isang sample. So, halimbawa, you've decided to make chocolate chip cookies for your family reunion. So, the recipe calls for 3-4 cups of sugar and the recipes can make 20 cookies. You need to make 60 cookies. So, how much sugar will you need? So, ito ay isang uri ng example ng application ng proportion. So, pag naggagawa ka ng chocolate chip, at actually kahit hindi sa chocolate chip, sa kahit anong recipes, na consider ang ratio and proportion. So, paano mo ngayon ipapakita yung ratio and proportion dito? So, pwede nating sabihin na sa 3 fourth of sugar, makakagawa ka ng 20 cookies. That's why we write it down as fraction. 3 fourth sugar over 20 cookies. Then, may question dito. You need to make 20, uh, you need to make 60 cookies, kaya ilang sugar ang kailangan mo. Since hindi natin alam yung sugar, we put X, sugar, okay? Kasi ito yung isosolve natin, and yung ating number of cookies na kailangan magawa is 60 cookies. And then that's it. Pwede mo na ngayong isolve to gamit ang proportion. Cross-multiply cross lang and solve for our X. Malalaman na natin kung gaano karaming sugar ang kailangan sa cookies. Kaya mag-isip kayo ng iba pang samples, hindi lang to kasi marami talagang pwedeng maging samples ng proportion. Okay, punta na tayo sa number 3. Ito, computation to. So, if A is to B and B is to C as 5 is to 2, 2 is to 3, where A, B, and C is greater than 0, find the values of A, B, and C when A squared minus B squared minus C squared is 48. Okay, so ito dito medyo marami tayong gagawin. <laughs> Pero okay, matakot kasi kayang kaya nyo rin to. Meron din examples dyan sa inyong learner's packet kung paano ito sinusolve, di ba? Pero ipakita at explain lang natin ng dahan-dahan para magets nyo. So, ang first step na gagawin natin, so ilalit lang natin itong A is to B and B is to C as 2, 5 is to 2 and 2 is to 3. Sulat lang natin itong mga ratios natin into fraction. So, A over 
5, kasi A yung ka-partner niya, A and 5, then is equal to B over 2, ayan, and is equal to C over 3, and i-equal natin sa K. Ngayon, isosolve na natin yung A, B, and C gamit yung equation na to. So, kunin lang muna natin yung A over 5, equal natin sa K. So, para makuha mo yung A dyan, iti cross-multiply mo lang. Pag kinross-multiply mo yan, makukuha mo na yung A is equal to 5K. ba? A is equal to 5K. So, ganun na rin ang gagawin natin dito sa letter B. B over 2 is equal to K. Ang makukuha natin dyan, B is equal to 2K. And ito naman, C over 3 is equal to K. Cross-multiply, C is equal to 3K. Meron na tayong value ng A, B, and C. So, A, 5K, B, 2K, and C, 3K. Next, substitute natin yung mga nakuha natin values sa given natin na A squared minus B squared minus C squared is equal to 48. So, remember, ito yung nakuha natin kanina na mga value ng A. Papalitan lang natin itong A dito ng 5K, ayan, 5K squared, minus yung B natin, which is 2K, 2K squared, and yung C natin na 3K, okay, then squared to kaya 3K squared, then equal to 48. Then, simplify natin, 5K squared is 25K squared, then ito, 2 times 2 is 4K squared, then 3 squared, or 3 times 3 is 9 K squared, then equal natin sa 48. Next, combine similar terms. So, pwede natin i-simplify yung mga similar terms o yung may mga K squared. So, pwede natin i-solve to. So, 25 K squared minus 4 K squared minus 9 K squared. So, simplify natin yan. Ang lalabas is 12 K squared. So, may minus lang natin yung 25 minus 4 minus 9. So, 12 K Yung lalabas, then copy, k squared. Kasi puro naman sila similar terms. Then, next, divide both sides by 12. Para makuha natin ang k. So, i-divide lang natin both sides sa 12. So, ito yun. Let's divide natin sa 12. So, makakancel na ngayon yung 12. Nakatabi ni k squared. May iwan na lang yung k squared. Then, simplify natin yung 48 divided by 12. So, k squared is equal to 4. Ito na ba yung answer natin? Hindi pa. Kasi kailangan K lang. E may K, K squared to. Paano natin ngayon matatanggal yung squared para maging K na lang? So, i-apply natin yung extracting square root. So, i-extract natin yung square root on both sides. Ibig sabihin, i-square root natin both sides. Pag in-square root natin yan, K squared is K. So, mawawala na yung 2 na exponent and then square root natin ng 4. Ang 4 ay merong square root na positive and negative 2. ba? Pwedeng 2 times 2 is 4 and negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So, nakuha na natin ang k. May dalawang values ang k. Pero, it is an important note, we will disregard negative 2 because a, b, and c are positive numbers. Paano natin nasabi na positive numbers lang at hindi pwedeng negative? Binanggit dito sa ating question yung A, B, and C greater than 0. So, hindi pwedeng negative. Kaya, anong kukunin lang natin na answer? Ang kukunin lang natin na answer is positive 2. Huwag na natin isasama yung negative 2. So, ngayon, meron na tayong K. We will use the value of K is equal to 2 to get the numbers. O yung A, B, and C natin. So, K is equal to 2. Then, ito yung nakuha natin ng unang-una sa step 1 na values ng A, B, and C. Palitan na natin yung K ng 2. So, unahin muna natin sa A. So, 5 times yung K na 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Then, sa B, yung K, palitan mo ng 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And yung C, 3 times 2 is 6. Therefore, A is equal to 10, B is equal to 4, and C is equal to 6. So, ganun lang. Tandaan lang yung anim na steps. Medyo mahaba talaga yan. Kailangan ng patience kasi hindi siya agad-agad masasolve. Pero madadali lang naman kasi 
you know, maliliit na numbers lang naman yung given. Okay? So, I hope na makatulong ang video na to para masagutan mo ang mga learning tasks mo sa mathematics. And don't forget to share this to other students sa ibang kaklase mo para sila rin naman ay matuto at ganahang sumagot sa kanilang mga learning tasks. At naniniwala ako na kayang-kaya mo yan. Okay? Don't forget to subscribe at my channel so para maging updated kayo sa mga videos na gagawin ko and pwede kayong maglagay ng mga questions ninyo about sa mga lessons ninyo. Comment lang kayo sa comment section natin or you can follow me on Facebook and send me a message there. So napin nyo lang, VTeach Channel. So don't forget, like and share. Bye-bye!